What's going on guys? Wanted to make a quick video here. Um, I'm gonna be traveling um, the next couple of days, so I'm not gonna be able to put out any videos or content, and uh, i just getting over COVID. Uh, I either, either had COVID or the flu the past couple of days, so I've been feeling extremely under the weather. Um, today's the first day that I actually feel better that I've gotten out of bed. Um, and I wanted to make this video and uh, I guess share uh, my thoughts and my progress on what's happening with, with this uh, business, uh, my 3D print business. Um, it's official that I signed a, a new lease on one of the warehouse spaces that I showed you guys in the previous video. Um, I'll share more details as the time gets closer. Um, there's still applications that need to be submitted, uh, forms that need to get filled out, um, and, and all that good stuff. Um, but I have worked out with the landlord, one of those three spaces I showed you, um, effective February 1st. So, ironically, I moved into this, I moved into this space February 1st. So on my one year anniversary of moving the print farm from my basement to this 2,000 square foot warehouse space, uh, exactly one year later, I'll be moving out again. Um, I'm kind of dreading that whole process of moving everything into out of the space into the new space good thing is it's only five minutes away from where I'm currently at so that's a big plus um, I also have a bay door here uh, whereas on the previous move I had to disassemble everything from my basement carry it up the steps and do that trip multiple times here I think I can just probably utilize the bay door here uh, get a tractor trailer backed in and I can just hopefully just move these uh, move these shelves assembled right into the bay doors um, aside from that I'll be using movers uh, that's the whole plan again I'll try to document this as best as I can and so yeah uh, very excited um, I already told Evan um, again nothing has actually been set in stone yet um, still working with the uh, landlord about the lease and finalizing the, the lease and whatnot. Um, but it's going to be an interesting, interesting uh, next couple of weeks, especially in February. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be doing too many uh, Valentine's Day prints right now, uh, just because I've been sick for the past week. I'm going to be traveling for the next couple of days, and then I have to work, do work on the lease, um, and then finding out logistically how to handle all this stuff. Um, I will be moving other things into that warehouse space for now, so this, the entire space won't be used primarily for 3D printing. Um, again, we'll get into more of that in the next couple of weeks. Um, but for now, my, my end goal with that space is essentially to get, uh, you know, I, have 140, I have 150 3D printers, um, and, and it's really not necessarily the amount of printers that I'm, I'm interesting, interested in getting to, like it's not, like, oh, I need to get to four or 500 printers. Uh, otherwise, um, like that, that's just not my goal. My goal is to, you know, continually upgrade the farm uh, to get to a production capacity that I can um, justify, right? So I'm gonna be doing a lot more on my website. I'm gonna be doing a lot more on Etsy. Um, I stayed home all day yesterday uh, looking at our Trying to figure out what the hell is going to happen with TikTok. I was listening to the Supreme Court arguments and all that stuff. Honestly, I have no freaking idea. I guess we'll find out in the next couple of days since they have, what, eight days from today to decide. It'd be kind of sick if they waited till like January 18th to uh, file or to give a, a decision for the Supreme Court to give a decision on, on what they're going to do. Um, but anyways, you know, TikTok, I started TikTok last year and you know did pretty well. But um, again, my bread and butter has always been Amazon. Uh, Walmart, um, Best Buy is going to be along with third-party sellers in 2025, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm also probably going to be looking on expanding to Timu uh, and uh, Jet. So these are all other e-commerce websites that you know millions of shoppers shop on, and you as a third-party seller can go and apply and sell sell on. So uh, there's a lot that I want to do with the space, but essentially my goal is to build out a you know. A, a massive 3D print farm that can produce thousands of different items, right? 
Uh, if you look at my SKU count for 2024, I mean it was it was expansive from what I had in the previous years, but we're probably made, we're still under probably 100 SKUs. I would say if you look at if you don't include the sizes and the color variations, I think we're only at maybe like 50 different unique products that we were con constantly selling throughout the year. So, like I want to get the number up to a thousand for 2025, right? Maybe hire uh, an in-house designer to help me with listings, an in-house catalog team to help me with getting listings set up on uh, Etsy and all the uh, other marketplaces. Uh, if you are an online seller, you know that it's very tedious. Uh, you can use third-party um, platforms to integrate all of your listings into one space, but it is very expensive. Um, I think at that point, you're still better off just hiring somebody internally that can help you uh, do that. Um, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see. So far, the plan is to, again, just continue printing what we have for now. Um, I love these new dragons, by the way. This is uh, our rose. Or, yeah. These are a couple of our new dragons that we've been printing the past couple days. Or in the past couple weeks. Uh, this is from Layers in Green. So this is her one variation and then this is the other. And again, we choose uh, these colors ourselves. Um, they also just came out with like a, a Valentine's Day themed one. Um, yeah. So if you are interested in uh, what's going to be happening with this print farm in 2025, follow along. Um, you won't be disappointed. I will be trying to document every step along the way and give you guys more of an update as things come along. Uh, the fun part is I ordered so much filament uh, in like the past couple of weeks and it's just, they're all being shipped now. And some of them have this address. Some of them I told them to ship it to the other address. Um, hopefully things work out. Um, we have a lot of uh, broken 3D printers that need to get, get fixed. Uh, before I move, uh, I want to do more work with organization um, and basically yeah, look at that. So this happens often actually with this printer and you can see that the PTFE tube kind of uh, curls downwards and I think what's happening is as it goes towards the back of the printer, um, it like crimps the uh, PTFE tubing and it causes layer shifts like all the time. So. Um, I thought I had something here that uh, held it up like this. Like you'll see I ended up doing something like this uh, to prevent that from happening. So I guess I got to do that for that one. All right, so I guess the last topic that I wanted to bring up was, I guess, the topic of rent. Um, I know that rent's expensive. That's kind of what it is here in the Northeast. Um, ironically, uh, the price per square foot that I got for this space is probably the cheapest that you'll ever find. Um, it's cheap, uh, but it's expensive because it's a big place. So um, instead of like dwelling on how much rent the space costs, I understand that it does cost quite a bit of money, um, more money than a lot of people can afford. Um, I'm more focused now on finding ways to increase top line revenue for the company um, so that the rent doesn't play that big of a factor on your you know, P&L. Um, and again, the rent is used for a space to house you know, employees, uh, the 3D printers, um, a workspace to create like, and, and innovate. And you know, who knows, I can, I can maybe get my own filament line in there one day uh, I can 3D print my own plastic, uh, I can um, have my own filament extrusion line in there. Some of the things that I've been playing around with, maybe get into resin printing a little bit. Um, someone suggested I can open like a retail spot in the front space to drive uh, traffic. You know, it would have been cool if TikTok didn't get shut down and you know, you could do like daily TikTok lives every day for one to two hours a day, just have one of my workers or um, whoever wants to do it, you know, do that and they would get paid like a commission or something like that for every sale they do for a TikTok shop. It would have been pretty cool, but we'll, I, I'm, I'm kind of holding off on what's going to happen. See, we're, I'm going to hold off and see what's going to happen with TikTok um, for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, I know rent's expensive. Uh, it is what it is. You are, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to move out to the Midwest and 
build a barn in the middle of the of a farmland for dirt cheap, although well, I could. Um, right, I'm not gonna move into the middle of nowhere, buy land for cheap. It, like, right, I'm, I'm kind of stuck where I am, right? I have a family, I have kids that I have to raise. And so instead of worrying about, like I said, instead of worrying about rent, I'm more worried about more ways to bring money in for, uh, for that space uh, to give my um, employees, you know, a healthy and stable income so that they can live their lives and eventually, you know, when they do something else, if they wanted to do so, um, buy a house at their own uh, company, whatnot, right? Uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, that was kind of it. I just wanted to make this a quick video and wrap up my thoughts. Um, and I'll see you guys probably uh, sometime next week. I know I'm going to be out of the country for a couple days. Not out of the country, really. I'm just going to be traveling up, up north. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.